Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Fell, and if you'd like to see a simple one-minute crown removal technique using this B1346 crown spreader, I'm going to show you a video right now. This is shot this week with my overhead boom camera, so check this out. So here we are. I'm going to split the crown with a KS0 diamond. The narrower diamond is better for this because we need to uh, basically, we need to basically cut a smaller, narrower slot for the instrument to go in. And this, I find, after testing a number of different diamonds, is the ideal diameter of diamond to do this. The majority of the time spent doing this procedure is really just cutting the crown in half. So we're just splitting the crown. Careful not to over prep into the preparation of the tooth. So we're using lots of water, using a mirror. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of crown this was. Um, I was doing a rehab case this week. This is on a dentist actually. And we're opening his vertical because he had a lot of anterior tooth wear and end-to-end -end occlusion. So we have to open his vertical. So I'm removing the old restorations. We're going to basically open the vertical. So I'm carefully sectioning the preparation. And now I come in with the Brazler instrument. And it's so easy on a lot of these cases. We're just basically spreading it with this instrument and it pops right out. So it's, it's very simple. Uh, let me show you the core buildups here with this case. Uh, I do a lot of my core buildups and posterior preps with a rubber dam. So here I've cut the slot of the rubber dam to do the buildups. So I've cut a little slot, put a cotton roll in, and you can see back here, this isn't acid etch, this is ultradent blockout resin. I've covered the uh, second molar because we're not treating it. He actually, it's not an occlusion, so we took it out of the treatment plan. And here I'm just stacking my self-cured Denmat core paste. If you look at my core buildup masterclass, we go through the technique in full detail, which adhesive I'm using for this and how we're mixing and uh, stacking this. I've used this material for, it's getting close to 30 years now since I learned the basics of this technique from Dr. Bill Strupp. And I modified it a little with a different adhesive system, but for the most part, it's similar to Dr. Strupp's. So that is the core. So here I'm cutting off another crown on the other side for the same patient. You can see again the KS0 sectioning the crown in half. And I'm using lots of water and I'm just visualizing that I'm not cutting into the prep very much. That's the main thing. Uh, we had a little bit of a water leakage, so we're adjusting the rubber dam there. And now I'm going to continue cutting the crown in half with the KS0. So you, you can't see all of this because of the way the boom camera is, but basically I'm cutting through the occlusal, cutting through the lingual. And this technique's really great for, you know, cemented crowns. If this was a bonded crown, I have to be more careful and maybe section it a little bit further. I don't torque too hard with bonded crowns because you can actually break off parts of the tooth. So this is more ideal for cemented crowns. It works great with cemented zirconia crowns, metal ceramic crowns, or any kind of all ceramic cemented crowns. I'm not sure what this was, but here you can see I'm splitting it. And half of it came off and then just that extra little torquing got the other half off. Now, if I'm gonna do a core buildup on this bicuspid, you know, the rubber dam's definitely in the way. Uh, you can cut the interproximal of the rubber dam, or the other option is you seat a B4 clamp over that prep. So here's a B4 clamp. I'm just going to seat it over this, and I could do the whole crown prep, uh, the whole um, core buildup with the B4 clamp. So here's now again injecting in the core paste after adhesive, and we're doing onlay 
onlays and onlay veneers on the posterior teeth, but I'm doing a base with the core paste because they had, you know, deeper fillings. We could have used composite, direct composite here, but we decided to use the base and core paste since I was having it out. And then look at this back, this, this premolar, the B4 clamp retracts perfectly. So now, you know, that tooth was prepped, but it was a pretty small little prep. So I just wanted to add more volume to the tooth preparation. So I'm just doing a core paste build up on top of the prep and then I'll, I'll basically prep it again, but leave more tooth structure there, which is partly to core paste. So there's that. That shows you a good idea of cutting off these crowns and then some little tips with the rubber dam with the B4 clamp and then just stacking these cores with this uh, dead mat self-cured core paste. So a little bonus tip, a couple of bonus tips with this video. Now here's the instrument itself. It's a Brazzler B1346. You can see it has a really nice handle. It's not very heavy. It's very strong and robust on the spreading sides. And there's two different angles. So I've gone through these over the years, you know, had a couple of these because they do get worn out. You can see over the years, this one's gotten worn out. It's probably a couple years old. I have pictures of some older ones that are much more damaged than this. But once you kind of lose the sharpness to the tip, um, you probably want to replace it because it's just not going to work as effectively. And you can see the diameter of this. If I use a KS0 diamond, it's about perfect for this to go in. There's room for it to go in, but not too much room. If you have too much space, it's not as effective. So that's why I found that that KS0 diamond is great. And then here's just uh, from the website, the Brazzler website, where you can see it. I will add a link below in the description for this video for the US Brassler website. And then KS0 diamonds you can get from Brassler as well or different manufacturers. If you look here, this is a 0.9 millimeter round ended cylinder diamond. Uh, I like this the best. The KS2 can work as well, but it just creates a wider slot, which is not as effective with the crown removal instrument. And then if you're removing, the other use I have for this is removing uh, spot bonded uh, pro provisional veneers or onlays. I cut slots in them, again, ideally with the KS0, and then I go in and I just torque the, um, the provisionals off. And it breaks them, but you know, you're spot bonding your provisional veneers. I spot etch a really small circle and then I put desensitizer, usually a G5 or Gluma desensitizer on the prep. And then I seat the provisional veneers with flowable composite. I don't use any adhesive in it of any kind. You'll have an even harder time getting them off. Just having a small spot etched spot, the flowable composite will adhere to that and give you good retention for your provisional veneers. And then you just have to, again, cut a slot, torque it with this uh, instrument here and just torque it in a few different places. Usually I need to cut maybe a couple of slots in some of the veneer preps. It's uh, variable how easy it comes off, but um, you can get them off pretty straightforward with this instrument. So that's it, a quick little tip for today showing you this instrument and a little technique for crown removal and a couple of other little tips. Uh, we'll put a link below for the instrument I'll put a link below for another crown removal tool that I have called a Richwell Crown Remover. That one is in a different YouTube video. And I'll also put a link where you can go to Fail and Dental Seminars. If you're not on our email list, you can join the email list and you'll receive our Dental Excellence newsletter. You'll also receive a video, a webinar replay from our Composite Mastery Online course. So it's a good, Good little bonus for joining our email list. So there you go. If you're enjoying this video and videos like this, just leave a comment below, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and also um, you know, let us know future videos that you'd like information about. I'm actively planning out some new videos for this year. So happy new year and talk to you soon. Take care.